Hello, everyone, and good morning in Australia. <laughs> Welcome, everyone, in uh, the US as well, evening there. And my name is Ron Ray, and we're going to be talking with our, a special guest today who is a leader of a Marian apostolate of Mary Mediatrix of All Graces in New Jersey. And his name is Raphael. Uh, nice to meet you, Raphael, and thanks for coming on. Hi, uh, good evening uh, to all your viewers here in the United States. Good morning in Australia, and good morning and uh, good evening to wherever you are in the world. <laughs> thanks, Raphael. And as always, our co host today, Eve Shucks. Thanks, Eve, for joining us. Oh, thank you. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Is, would you be able to start us off with a prayer and then introduce Raphael for us? Yes. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Lord God, we thank you for this opportunity to share uh, the loving uh, graces that Our Lady has bestowed on us through her visions throughout the world. And we ask Our Lady of Revelation to uh, enlighten us in this uh, conversation in order to bring uh, a greater glory to your son, Jesus. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. So, Yves, would you be able to give us a bit of an introduction? I know that Raphael is a close friend of yours, and uh, maybe you could yeah. just tell us more about his apostolate. And Yes, yeah, so um, we, uh, I think we met the first time in 2016. Um, but it, it's it's very possible that I, I met him here and there in New Jersey before that. But my formal introduction was in 2016, when a um, a visionary from uh, um, from Brazil uh, was uh, um, in New Jersey, and I, it was he was a close friend of mine as well, and he became a very close friend of uh, Rafael, and uh, so we had uh, this in common. But we uh, realize that we have all the Marian apparitions in common because uh, uh, Raphael has a great love for the Blessed Virgin Mary. And uh, he has a, a post, a daily post, and sometimes he posts uh, three, four times a day on, uh, on uh, Facebook, all these uh, Marian apparitions. I, I uh, marvel to see the, uh, the dedication that he has to spread Our Lady's love. And is that right that, um, Raphael, do, do you have a pilgrimage apostolate as well where you take many yes, people to I, the I, shrines of Our Lady? Yes, I do. Uh, I would still would want to revive my pilgrimages to the various Marian shrines all over the world, especially now that COVID uh, a pandemic is over. So, but... We'll wait and see till uh, you know the the world situation gets better, you know, yeah. um, because right now the situation all over the world is very volatile because of uh, you know the ongoing uh, war between Russia and Ukraine, and now we have the uh, the war in in uh, Israel and uh, Gaza. So hopefully, you know. Uh, by next year, I would be ready to uh, yes. revive my Marian pilgrimages to the different Marian shrines, especially to the different major Marian apparition sites, you know, the historical ones and the uh, the ongoing ones like Medjugorje, Garabandal and elsewhere. And you've been following Marian apparitions for many years now. Yes. Uh, can you tell us a little bit I've about been, how it all started? I've been uh, like studying Marian apparitions, I think, exactly for 41 years now. I started when I was about 13 years old growing up in Manila because I, I studied with the Dominican fathers in uh, Manila at uh, Colegio de San Juan de Letran in Manila in the Philippines. And uh, it is through the Dominicans that I de developed my love and my devotion to Our Lady, especially under her glorious title of Our Lady of the Most Holy Rosary. And it is through uh, my uh, 
devotion to Our Lady of the Rosary that I wanted to learn more about the different uh, Marian apparitions. apparitions. So yep. When I was like uh, in sophomore, I could still remember that uh, I borrowed everything that I would, uh, that I could get uh, in the library about Marian apparitions. You know, like uh, Lourdes and Fatima, La Salette. And uh, believe it or not, I was able to read during that time, you know, the the very thick uh, novel of the Song of Bernadette because I was I really you know to delve what really happened in Lourdes and then I uh, read Father DeMarquis' book on Fatima and then from there you know I mm -hmm. I started slowly studying studying the different Marian apparitions through the years until. About maybe 1987, that's when I encountered uh, Medjugorje and Garabandal. So I began to st study all those apparitions too. Yes. Um, it's, it's very um, powerful, isn't it, that um, these apparitions have a very strong role to play in the spiritual life of so many Catholics and um, and we see that so many Catholics of strong faith follow these apparitions. Um, today we want to talk a little bit about apparitions in general because, as we know, there's going to be a document coming out on the 17th of May from the Vatican that's going to be about uh, how to discern the apparitions, uh, especially Marian apparitions and other phenomena, manifestations like stigmata and so on. And I mm -hmm. thought it would be good to have you on to, to discuss um, what may come of this document. We're not, we're not exactly sure yet, but we have some ideas. Um, would you like to make some initial comments before we, we watch a, sh a short clip about this um, coming document? Okay, yes, I read that uh, the DDF, the uh, the dicastery of the doctrine of the faith in the Vatican will be coming up with a, do, a new document with probably new guidelines in discerning uh, private revelations, but most especially on Marian apparitions, mm. uh, because that is the most uh, obvious and most uh, prevalent uh, manifestation of the supernatural in the last, uh, I would say, in the last uh, 40 years or so. So, mm -hmm. and, and they've uh, been uh, rapidly increasing all over the world. Yes, and Marian apparitions has been increasing all over the world, uh, especially in our time. Uh, it has been going on, you know, since uh, the phenomena of Medjugorje began in 1981. But actually, you know, Our Lady has been coming to us more frequently in the last 150 years or so, beginning with her apparitions at Rudobac in Paris, France, with St. Catherine Labore in 1830. Uh, that was the beginning or the inauguration of the Ma Marian Age uh, when the Blessed Virgin Mary has been uh, coming to the earth more frequently, warning her children about impending dangers to come if people do not pray and convert and listen to her messages. Yes. Um, the worrying thing about this document is that a lot of people find it it may limit in some way our um, ability to to be able to follow these um, to be able to follow these apparitions with um, with with a you know clear conscience mm -hmm. um, do you think that that may be an issue you know I I know there are some fears in some Marian circles you know especially those who are very devoted to the different uh, titles of Our Lady from the different aspects of her apparitions. 
uh, hmm. there is a fear there that the Vatican might, uh, you know, uh, I would say like limit, limit. or curtail some uh, apparitions, mo most especially apparitions that uh, that have a more prophetic or kind of, let's say, quote unquote, apocalyptic uh, aspect. Uh, yes, you know, with more prophetic and more uh, apocalyptic aspect in their messages. Yes, and one of the Marian experts in the Vatican that's part of this um, creating this document has actually just said that he said that, which we're going to watch briefly in a second. Um, he said that all oh, these there's many apparitions that are promoting fear, and like you said, apocalyptic messages and. And what's worrying is that he also said that these do not come from God because God does not give us fear and God does not give us, you know, worry. God's a God of peace. So do you think that this is a alarm bell that um, maybe they're trying to get rid of everything that causes fear or that can possibly be linked to fear or chastisement or tribulation? I think uh, Ver is like, a uh, a reasonable you know uh, reason for people to to be um, wary or afraid about what the DDF might uh, issue regarding uh, Marian apparitions, like the guidelines that we're going to uh, you know uh, implement. Mm -hmm. especially, you know, with regards to messages that speak about chastisement. So so if in that respect, you know, mm. you know, I, I know that uh, Xavier Eral had mentioned this before, that, yes. that that would mean that in effect, like La Salette, Fatima, Akita, Garabandal, and all Marian apparitions that that speak about chastisement and other uh, apocalyptic uh, messages will be kind of uh, quote unquote be cancelled, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's the fear among Marian devotees. But that is not a hundred percent correct, is it? We still do not know exactly what the document. Is going to to say yeah. so right now. Yeah. Right now, people could just only speculate. It's a speculation. So, mm -hmm. Okay. Well, let's watch this video clip. It's a it's a really good clip, and it kind of summarizes uh, what we do know so far about what's happening with this document. So I'll put it on on the screen, and then we can pause and have a discussion as it goes. So let's pause it there. So that's um. Our Holy Father's opinion. He said that's his personal view that he doesn't feel that Our Lady is like a post office sending messages on a daily basis. And um, I guess, you know, a lot of people feel that way. And uh, that's probably one of the criticisms of Medjugorje. Do you think that that's going to be addressed in the in the coming document? And what, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, probably, you know, like, Pope Francis, uh, you know, comments is kind of like a direct innuendo against Medjugorje. Uh, but still, it's still his own personal opinion, you know. Uh, it wouldn't have any weight so far, not unless they would say, you know, that th there is nothing supernatural going on in Medjugorje, you know. But so far, as far as we know, the results of the study on Medjugorje uh, beginning in 2010, uh, initiated by our late Holy Father, Pope Benedict XVI, uh, the conclusions of the Medjugorje Commission headed by Cardinal uh, Camilo Ruini had a positive uh, results. Uh, and they even recommended the, the panel of theologians and uh, psychologists and doctors recommended that uh, the first seven 
uh, apparitions of Medjugorje, the first seven apparitions of 1981, in June 1981, uh, be declared as supernatural. Oh, wow. So that was yeah. the results of the uh, Kamili uh, 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 Ruini Commission uh, mm. regarding Medjugorje, that they recommend uh, that Medjugorje be declared authentic in its first uh, seven apparitions. Yeah, well, one of the things that I, I think of, um, like the, the message of Medjugorje and the, uh, the apparition, um, you, you judge it by its fruits. And um, by far, there's, there's hundreds, uh, thousands and thousands of priests that found the vocation there all over the world. Um, and most, of, I've never been to Medjugorje, believe it or not, but uh, I want to one day. Uh, but the, the the testimony is always the same. You know, you've the experience Our Lady's love there in Medjugorje. That seems to to to, to be in line with what Pope Pope uh, Francis is saying about Our Lady's love. You know, mm. it really is. If it's Our Lady's love that they're experiencing, and that's a uh, it becomes a they're being touched by God. That's where they're going, right? And um, I think that's it, important to um, to point out that as far as the the day to day uh, visions and, and messages of of Medjugorje, it usually has to do with pray more, uh, do more penance. Uh, it's very very um, much in line with what Our Lady uh, is always asked at all the apparitions that have been approved. Yes, definitely. Well, let's continue watching this video and then we'll comment more. Okay, so as you can see, the the Marian expert there that's talking about his concern of pseudo-apparitions, what, what does he mean by that, uh, Raphael, pseudo-apparitions? Pseudo-apparitions are really like the false apparitions that have been deemed as non supernatural in nature by mm. uh, by the church, more specifically by the 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 castery of the doctrine of the faith. You know, um, mm. so because in the church, in discerning private uh, revelations, particularly Marian apparitions, there are three stages or three. Uh, uh, Three criteria for the church in uh, categorizing uh, apparitions. First, we have the the criteria of the constat de supernaturalitate. That means the church has established the supernatural uh, character of a certain apparition, and then we have the middle ground which we call as the constat non constat then the uh, the non supernatural tate or uh, constant the supernatural non constat the supernatural tate it's uh, this, uh the middle ground wherein the church has not yet established the supernatural nor the supernatural character of a Marian apparition. Mm. Now we also have finally the third uh, category, which is the constat de non supernaturalitate. That means the church has definitively uh, concluded that there is no supernatural character in a certain uh, apparition. Mm. So that mm. the third one uh, means that an apparition has been condemned or disapproved right. by the church. And currently, as you were saying, Medjugorje has, is is the middle one, right? That's it's yes. Not fully approved, Medjugorje it's belongs not to the second category, which is the non constat de supernaturalitate. However, as you were saying, the first seven. Uh, was that the first seven um, the first apparitions seven in Medjugorje? Apparitions, 
of Medjugorje uh, from June 24 up to June 30 of 1981 was recommended mm. by the commission, uh, mm -hmm. by the Ruini Commission, to be declared as supernatural in character. But so far, we haven't declared that yet. So right. that uh, is uh, still pending, uh, right. depending if Pope Francis would uh, approve the VAT. Right. So the actual um, commission has, has found that the first seven apparitions in Magigori were of supernatural to be nature. Supernatural in nature, yes. But they haven't formally um, put that they out. They haven't yet. formally decreed that yet. Mm. So mm. that would uh, that is under the decision of the Holy Father through the dicastery of the doctrine of the faith. Mm. I was just reading a, the um, from the article, which says that. The Mariologists are concerned about a worldwide phenomena. The many alleged messages, as we are seeing, are negative. They generate fear and terror, and this is not the image of God that Jesus taught us. So I was just saying that, you know, does that mean that the book of Revelation or the apocalypse itself, which generates fear and terror, is that... Um, you know, how do we reconcile the messages which tell us that apocalypse is coming and to mm -hmm. prepare for that with what the uh, Vatican is saying? Well, for me personally, that there is a disconnect between the two, you know, mm. uh, because we know, uh, especially that our church, uh, the Catholic Church has been established, uh, you know, like, uh, in the early, since the early uh, years and centuries of the church, there are already, you know, apparitions or private revelations already uh, taking place. Yes. You know, um, we would say that uh, in the book of Acts, for example, you know, uh, St. Paul I would say was the first visionary uh, after yes. the resurrection because during his uh, trip to Damascus, that's when he fell uh, from from his horse and and Jesus appeared to him and uh, told him to go to Damascus and there he would uh, he would be told what to do. And uh, that was already the first uh, uh, revelation, even in the uh, in the early days of Christianity. Uh, but also, uh, we also have uh, Saint James uh, the Great, who was the first official Marian visionary in the history of the Church. He received an apparition of Our Lady in 40 AD when uh, Our Lady appeared to him uh, in Spain at Zaragoza. Uh, during that time, Our Lady was still living in, uh, in Jerusalem or in Ephesus, but she was bilocated by the angels to, uh, to Zaragoza in Spain so that she could console St. James during his time of uh, uh, during his time of uh, I would say depression uh, because he was he was having a hard time uh, evangelizing the first uh, uh, the people of Spain uh, mm -hmm. to Christianity. Oh wow! So the document. Obviously, um, as the Mariologist was pointing, may have something to say about generating fear or terror. W what is your opinion on that? Uh, Eves, did you want to say something about that as well? Well, the, uh, well I think uh, the, uh, the Vatican may have, uh, like, also reasons to, you know... Hmm. To issue this alarm because there are some uh, messages that are 
I would say, kind of overly apocalyptic, uh, you know, you know, especially there are some apparitions that uh, that say that we have to, uh, like, there are, there are so, there is like an over emphasis on like, uh, physical, you know, preparation, you know, mm, mm, uh, yes. physical preparation, you know, all the, almost like a, a physical prepping thing. Mm, so, mm. Uh, so that's why the Vatican would want to make sure that people are not being deceived by mm. overly uh, apocalyptic uh, messages. Mm. So one one of the things I'm thinking um, is that uh, there are uh, several. If 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 I was the devil, and I wanted to 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 bring confusion inside the church, I would create as many uh, illusions of apparitions all over the world, as well, in order to deceive the people from the true and authentic apparitions. And I think that's it's 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 happening. Uh, there are apparitions that I remember as a child because I've been following this since I was 12, <laughs> actually six or seven years old. Uh, Gerald Van Dahl was the first one I heard about. Um, and uh, there was this gentleman from uh, from Spain and he, uh, you know, claimed, you know, to have had apparitions and people were paying attention to him. And uh, uh, and it's uh, his name, I think, was Palmar de, de Troya. And uh, he end up, ended up uh, leaving the church and he declared, self-declared himself the Pope. So if I was the devil, I would, cre I would try to create as many, uh, uh, as much confusion in the, in the, in the uh, world in order to, uh, to discredit the, the authentic apparitions, the ones that are uh, truly uh, spreading Our Lady's message. So we always have to be careful. We have to be judicious ourselves uh, on, the, on on this matter. Just because someone claims to have had a vision, there mm. the fruits have to be um, uh, have to be accompanied. And I think a place like Medjugorje certainly has uh, proved a, a, a tremendous amount of fruits. That's right. The other issue I wanted to discuss is. Um, as you were saying, is there's a lot of many, many false apparitions out there. One of them in particular that I wanted to discuss, and I think it's important that we discuss it because it had a really big effect on faithful worldwide, and that is um, Maria Divine Mercy. And I think that there might be some examples of that in the coming document of how that can cause mass hysteria. Do you know much about Maria Divine Mercy, Raphael? And do you, can you comment I, on I've that? I've read, I've read uh, some uh, aspects, uh, some of her messages, but I'm not too uh, familiar uh, mm. with her. Uh, but right now, you know, I wouldn't make a, uh, a comment on her uh, right now because it's, uh, you know, she's too controversial, you know, mm, she's mm. too controversial that the uh, people, you know, over are followers of her that are, uh, that who are... They're very passionate followers of her, aren't they? very passionate about her, mm. about the authenticity of her messages, you know, but uh, we can uh, really, you know, but... So far, you know, the uh, the uh, notifications that were uh, issued on her is, uh, I would say, it's like there is one bishop uh, from Ireland who is not even her own uh, bishop, you know, made mm -hmm. a comment. Mm -hmm. So it was his own personal opinion, you know, uh, that she is not authentic, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, in the future, we would see, you know, if uh, 
if uh, she if her messages but people claim that some of her messages many of her messages have already come true yes especially with regards to uh, how they say that quote unquote that uh, Pope Benedict left yes uh, his papacy you know yes so, so that's one of the reasons why she she gained a mass following I don't know exactly the year but might have been um, yeah in the early 2000s is that right and or, yes or probably around when two thousand maybe about two thousand twelve two thousand thirteen yep. yes yep. And um, the thing that the controversial part is that she said that he will leave, Pope Benedict will leave his office and uh, he'll be replaced by the false prophet. So yes. that there's that narrative, I think, that the Vatican is trying very hard to, to you know, eliminate because it does cause a lot of division and its fruits are fruits of division and confusion. And we know that there are other um, prophets the one most recently is the mission of, or is it called the mission of divine mercy in Texas? Yes. Which has caused a lot of, also a lot of um, hype in the media. And that's also claiming something similar that the Pope is not, is an anti-Pope. So these kinds of things can be very dangerous. Eves, did you have any comments on that? Yes. Well, I, 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 I'll say something just because I, I'll forget otherwise. <laughs> yes. uh, what, what I, what I see here, is, um, is uh, one of the things that I, one of the things I would say to these people: What if you're wrong? Will you want to go to the, the judgment seat saying that you said the vicar of Christ is an, is the, is the false prophet? I, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't want to be have that on my soul. Um, I mean, we have to be very very cautious in these things, and uh, we need to keep our eyes open. But you know, the the core of the message of Our Lady is really repentance mm. and and reparation and uh, praying our rosary, uh, loving our enemies. These are things that Our Lady has always said, and you know. Uh, to me, because I've been following this all my life, I don't know anything better. <laughs> uh, but, you know, the rosary in my home and the messages of Our Lady, we took it to heart. We, we did penance. We, we uh, did the first Saturdays. We did the first Fridays. And we truly believed. And there was fruits. There was fruits of conversion. And I, what does Our Lady want? He wants her children to convert, you know. Mm. Uh, I... I that's what I, I feel that needs to be said. And be cautious. Beware. Beware. Don't say things that you're going to regret. Yes, very true. I, and... I agree. I agree uh, very much with Eve's. Uh, you know, we have to concentrate more on the basic messages of Our Lady. It reminds me that today, uh, today May 8th, is actually the 44th anniversary of a very important Marian apparition. Uh, today, May 8th, is the 44th anniversary of the first apparition of Our Lady of the Rosary to the late visionary of Cuapa, Nicaragua, Bern Padre Bernardo Martinez. And in Cuapa, Our Lady appeared just like in Fatima and mm. uh, the message of Quapa re-echoes the message of Fatima. Our Lady said that we must pray the rosary every day and we must convert because if we don't pray and convert and do what she asks, we are in the risk of uh, coming into a third world war. So yes. that call from Our Lady is very serious, especially... And that's now, actually a, a fully times, approved apparition, isn't it? It's a fully approved yes, apparition, yeah. Uh, Quapa has been approved in 1990, uh, 1994, mm. and then uh, officially 1994, and then uh, it was uh, confirmed again in 1997. Mm. Uh, by two bishops, you know, uh, respectively in 1994 and 1997. Uh, it was uh, approved 
uh, definitively by two bishops. Hmm. In, in That's that a very important, a very important one about yeah. World War Three. Yeah, and we can see that coming um, as we speak, can't we, with the current news around the world, especially in Israel. <coughs> Excuse me. So um, I just wanted to also share that um, Cardinal Fernandez has actually commented previously um, in a letter that he sent to a bishop, Bishop of Italy, Como, Italy, regarding another apparition. And this this is a positive um, assessment of another apparition, which is interesting because a lot of people are thinking that this is going to be a fully negative um a negative document document that's going to come out from mm -hmm. Cardinal Fernandez, but his previous letter, which which was on October the fourth, twenty twenty three, about the apparition coma, was actually positive. I'm going to read it because it will, it's probably um, probably tell us a lot about what will be said in the coming document. So here it is on the screen. Let me see. Put that up. Not sure if you can see that, but it's, it goes as follows. So after carefully studying the situation, this is from Cardinal Fernandez, I'm happy to acknowledge that the whole affair is imbued with positive elements that cannot be disregarded for the spiritual good of the faithful who frequent the shrine assiduously and with religious intentions. So that's an important point there that if it has a popular devotion, a positive popular devotion that people are frequenting um, their prayers and devotions through this apparition or through this um, manifestation, that's a positive. Furthermore, he says, an examination of the documentation revealed several positive elements, both spiritual and related to the doctrinal message of that experience, as well as the person involved whose discretion, seriousness, humility, and sincerity attest in favor of the credibility of his testimony. So that's another important thing is that the doctrinal message, we all know that that's very important. The doctrinal messages that are portrayed through any apparition needs to be investigated, as well as the person involved. So the person, as he points out here, um, whose discretion, involved whose discretion, seriousness, humility, and sincerity attest in favor of the credibility of his testimony. So that's another important um, factor to, to weigh in. I'm sure that these points will be also um, noted in the coming document. And finally, he says, above all, the central message of the entire spiritual experience is to be emphasized, namely, the affirmation of mercy as a fundamental trait of the very identity of the triune God, a theme that the theology and spirituality of our time strongly reiterate. So that that in itself is is quite heartening. Do you have any thoughts on that, uh, Raphael or or Jack? Or yes. Uh, with with the upcoming document, uh, I think they would want to emphasize more on the aspects of mercy. So mm -hmm. that means that any messages that talks about chastisement, you know, yes. will be regarded as uh, not authentic. So, so that would mean, you know, like uh, we know we have some apparitions that deal with messages of chastisement. A good example of that is uh, Akita and uh, Garabandal, you know, because yes. Our Lady... For example, at Garabandal, she said that if people do not change, you know, uh, there will be, be a chastisement just... coming. And in Akita, she said, uh, if people do not change and better themselves, fire will fall from the sky and a great part of humanity will be uh, annihilated. So mm. with that, you know... The, I think the Vatican would want to discourage any messages that that deal with uh, messages of uh, chastisement and uh, all sort of thing, you know. So, mm. 
Yeah, do you think that will have an effect on these apparitions like um, on Garabandal, on Akita, on Fatima? Would they be able to go back and say, okay, these apparitions have been shown to, to be, you know, talking about chastisement, that means they're not from God? Do you think it's going to go that far? With, with that, you know, uh, it's a very tricky question, you know. It's a mm, very... Mm. Uh, it's too early to tell, but if they but if they will implement that, uh, you know, criteria, you know, mm. that would mean that Lasalet, Fatima, Akita will be will fall under those categories as you know, uh, being uh, overly apocalyptic in nature, mm. you know, mm -hmm. so. Yeah, I think that's quite concerning, actually. What do you think, yes. uh, Eves? Well, I I think um, a lot of these apparitions have already been fully approved, and uh, a lot of the things that they uh, that have been predicted actually happened, um, like at Fatima. You know, the errors of of uh, Russia was spread all over the world, and it has. Uh, that could have been considered apocalyptic at the time. Uh, but the mm. signs of the times, when things start happening. Yes, that's a good then, point. Then, uh, then we need to just keep our eyes open. And um, it, that's why it's not going, going to be, it's, it's, I don't think it will be condemned in that sense. I think if there's, if there's anything, um, if, if, if the fruits of the apparition, mm. Are they bringing people to their knees? And one of the problems in, in like in all apparitions, uh, and I know several people, even people in my family, they, they followed apparitions, they were afraid for a while, and then they went back to their old lifestyle. And um, we, mm. we convert, we need to be sincere and have this love for Our Lady and love for our Lord and love of Jesus in the Eucharist. I think we need to be, Balance. I need. Uh, in reality, the, it's all the good news, right? Because the the gospel is is all about you know spreading the, the good news. And Jesus said, "Carry your cross." That could be apocalyptic. You know, it's not the something. Mm -hmm. you carry your cross. Uh, do penance, fast. All these things are is part of uh, the good news. And uh, yes. so, and anything that we're doing right now. Um, and I think we need to look at these apparitions, and I, there, I think, I don't think they're going to go after any of those apparitions that already have proven the, the fruits already there, and um, and you know, there's there's beautiful fruits when people you know start praying the rosary. I know in my home, when we started praying the rosary as a child, it changed our homes. And that was based on apparitions. It was based on apparitions of, Fa of Fatima and right. Gar Garabandal. My parents were very close. I found out uh, a few years ago that I was I was baptized the day that the Blessed Mother appeared in Garabandal, the first apparition. So there's, I feel, a closeness to Our Lady. Just the fact that mm -hmm. uh, you know, our our Lady is calling everyone, right? And uh, it's not us versus them. It's Our Lady wanting everyone to come to Jesus, right? And yes. uh, and I think if I look at my criteria for apparitions, if if the fruits are bringing people closer to Jesus, and they're they're not trying to divide people and say, "Are you on? Are you with us?" Or if you're not, then you're with them. I think that's a very important criteria is whether does it unite people or does, is it causing division in the church? And that's why I'm very skeptical about some of these other apparitions that try to attack the unity of the church, which is basically the, the figure of the, the Holy Father. So I would I would agree with, with um with the Vatican in taking that stand of caution, you know, against attacking the unity of the church. And that's a that's a really good point to um to see whether an apparition is authentic or not. Is it creating unity and devotion, or is it causing division? And I think division we know where that come comes from, don't we? I agree. I agree. And uh, 
<clears throat> you know, at, at, when you follow uh, the church and you're in love with the church and you're in love with Our Lady, well, one of the things that I was, Our Lady loves everyone without exception. And she mm. wants to bring them, exactly. the mother of mercy, she wants to bring them to Jesus. And um, sometimes you have to be a, a mother warning the people about the upcoming chastisements. I think yeah. that's a, an act of love. You say, if you don't change, the third world war is going to happen. Well, uh, let's mm. start saying our rosary. Let's listen to Our Lady, right? I think exactly, that, exactly. That, that's what needs to happen. Anything that Our Lady is asking, it should be a uh, warning in the sense for people to change their hearts and come closer to Jesus and the church. So true. And that's that's basically what it is. There can't be any messages of heaven and happiness and goodness without, you know, warning the people about what will happen without these, without prayer, without conversion, without repentance. And that, yeah. that's the yeah. same criticism that the previous document had is that where was the mention the document regarding same-sex blessings where was the mention of conversion where was the mention of repentance that it wasn't mentioned at all so it's important i think that same point is very important in the upcoming document is it going to be telling us that everything related to fear is wrong if if it does and then that's there's obviously a big question mark there because um, you know, we need to know where we're headed if we continue in the path of sin. Yes. If we continue in the path of sin, we're headed to fear, we're headed to destruction, we're headed to division, we're headed to hell. So, so yeah. we, we cannot escape. We cannot escape those elements of fear, can we? And we, you know, and that, going back to uh, to Fatima, when the, the children, I, I guess Our Lady wanted to scare them, brought them to hell, right? <laughs> It's like the worst place you could ever be in the, yeah. in the in the whole universe, but the Our Lady permitted them to see that for for them to to be warriors, to save souls, to bring uh, to, to do true. whatever they can to bring souls into heaven and to avoid hell. And uh, I think that is a healthy uh, spirituality to to be yes. aware of that hell is a reality if you don't repent. That's right. And a lot of these messages, Rafi, or correct me if I'm wrong, they tell us about the consequences of our, of our sins, don't they? A lot of Our Lady's messages emphasize, you know, if you continue on this path, this is the consequence of your sin. It could be, you know, the world will go back into war, World War Three. Yes. Another consequence is that you're heading to, you know, more division, more hatred. You're, you're heading to a world that is like overrun by a dictator could be an antichrist there's been a lot of antichrists around and we know that the antichrist is coming it's in the bible so where is that line where do we draw the line between fear and truth well uh we really have to uh our lady comes as a mother and uh our lady you know when uh she appears she in every apparition, she comes as a mother to warn her children of the danger that or that they are facing if people continue on uh, the path of uh, sinfulness and hatred and not following uh, the teachings of her son. And uh, a good example of this is that when Our Lady came uh, to appear at the uh, Kibeho in Rwanda, she said yes. that if people would continue, you know, uh, on the path of hatred and division, you know, you will come uh, that there will be rivers of blood in your country. So she showed them uh, a vision of rivers of blood and, and with heads, you know, decapitated and bodies scattered around with no one to bury them. And the, Our Lady said that that is what's going to happen if, if you don't uh, 
pray and uh, and unite yourselves and convert. Yes. And yeah. and true enough, it happened twelve years later that genocide in in Rwanda. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's a very clear example that. Uh, very good example indeed. If people do not uh, live and follow the the messages of Our Lady, especially in uh, in uh, praying the Rosary and doing what she asked, like the first Saturday devotion uh, for mm. five consecutive months. Well, and know, ultimately, just conversion, just a, a spiritual and a sincere conversion of heart, going back to God, going back to practicing the sacraments, you know, examining one's conscience honestly and trying to make a right path forward in your life. I think that's what God's really calling us to do, follow his His gospel. Eve, sorry, you had something to say. Yeah, well, I just think of, a, of a, um, any mother who sees danger for their children, I will warn them, if you don't do this, you're going to get hurt, right? That's being a mother. Our Lady does that. She is a, our mother, and she has concern mm -hmm. for, uh, because the concern she has is that if we don't repent, we're going to end up in, in, we will lose our soul, and our children will mm -hmm. as well. It's not only mm -hmm. for us, but it's for our children and our children's children. You know, this is uh, this is a warning for generations to come, and uh, you know, so that's very, very, very important. And going back to Rwanda, uh, I I know several people from Rwanda who lived through the genocide, and if it wasn't for Our Lady's messages to them, and and, and the the church uh, calling on them to forgive. I've never seen uh, uh, testimonies of forgiveness. People that have lost had lost all their ch their family and their children, and have a big smile on their face and say, "I forgive them. I forgive those who trespassed against my family, who, who mm -hmm. massacred their whole family." It's uh, it's it's humanly impossible, but with God, all things are possible, and that's where you see, you know. That uh, regardless of where, I mean, that is, a, uh, Rwanda is a stark warning for the world. Mm. Stark mm. warning. It, it will happen. And she did say in Rwanda that what happened, what, what it, it will spread throughout the whole world. So we're not done yet with the Rwanda. The, yes. If the people don't repent soon, the world will be uh, in, in a river of blood. Yes, indeed. Well, I also wanted to touch on uh, maybe finally uh, something that you said, Eves, about signs of of the times. Um, that's something that we just cannot escape, is it? R regardless of whether you know a church official or cardinal, or even the pope, tries to, you know, maybe suppress a, an apparition or not focus on apparitions too much, we just cannot escape from the signs of the times, which are very <laughs> apocalyptic in themselves. So I think that's a really good point there. Uh, did you did you want to comment on that, Raphael or Eves? Because I think that's a, a really interesting, a really powerful point there. Yes. Uh, we are really, you know, the signs of the times. Yes, we really have to listen to the signs of our times, especially now we are in the midst of uh, the danger of a third world war. It's a very real possibility, mm. uh, especially in these times that there are two major wars going on. So really we have to, uh, we really have to pray and uh, convert and do what Our Lady is asking from us. You know, pray our rosary every day and do the five for Saturday devotion uh, because that is the key in order for us to prevent a third world war. Uh, Our Lady at Fatima, through Sister Lucia, said, you know, that her triumph will not be uh, coming. The triumph of her Immaculate Heart won't be, uh, won't be coming up until people have 
uh, listen to her request in sufficient number, especially mm. in praying the daily rosary and doing the five, five for Saturday devotion. So that's very important that people realize that we go back to the basics, especially the, the, with the message of Fatima. Yes, exactly. Well, well thank you so much. Uh, Eves, did you want to have any yeah. final comments? Yes, uh, just a final qu uh, comment. Is uh, if, if someone wants to suppress Our Lady's message um, or, or in, in any way, where she really wants to give a message to her children. Uh, it says, like in the Bible, that the, mm. the stones will cry out, right? It will, uh, exactly. So there will be signs and wonders. And that is the reality. Um, Our Lady is not going to give up on her children. And so we need to keep our eyes open, uh, follow the commandments, uh, and learn your faith well so that you know your catechism uh, well, that you're well catechized, that you're not only learning for yourself, but you're wanting to share with others. Because evangelization, if if God has touched your heart, you'll want to bring it to the world. And that, that's what those who are truly Marian, that are consecrated totally to her, uh, they want to share Our Lady's love to everyone mm -hmm. in order to um, to bring them to love Our Lady as Jesus loves her. And, and you know what, uh, Ron, we really yes. don't have to worry, you know, whether or not the Vatican will uh, approve these, uh, you know, ongoing apparitions. Mm, because in mm. the end, Our Lady will prove herself, you <laughs> exactly. know. Uh, Our Lady Very will true. really prove herself if she, if she really did appear in these places like Garabandal, Medjugorje, and in other uh, places. It's very very she important has said point. That in the end, at the end of all my apparitions all over the world, people will know that I was really in those places when I leave permanent and visible signs in those places. So she promised a visible and permanent signs at all her apparition sites, not just mm. Medjugorje, not just Garabandal, but in every place where she appeared all throughout Marian history, there will be permanent and visible signs that will be left at all authentic apparition sites. So we will know in the end which are the authentic and the false ones when those visible signs appear at every apparition site. Beautiful. That that's something and, we and really need to when, hear. Of I'm course, looking forward to that, Raphael. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> yes, especially uh, with Garabandal, she promised for the warning to come and the great miracles. So, uh, and also in Medjugorje too, she also a promise of permanent. The sign there. Mm, so mm. if those uh, prophecies will uh, will materialize, then Our Lady would prove herself right. So we don't have to worry. What even if the Vatican would come out with uh, any kind of document, you know, uh, mm. disapproving, you know, uh, many or several apparitions. Yes, yes, yes. So right. That's so true. And I think we need to have that trust in God because sometimes we, we get very anxious and we think uh, we need to fight the battle, but it's actually God and Our Lady that's, that, that are fighting the battle and we, you know, we're with them by their side by embracing them and being part, um, putting ourselves into their sacred hearts um, as our refuge. So Amen. that's a very important point there. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, I wanted to read Acts 5, 38 to 39 to finish off with because I think it's very um, relevant to the situation and it's about the time when um, the Jewish leaders were trying to stop the gospel from being heard and um, one of the leaders, the Jewish leaders, said, therefore, 
In the present case, I advise you, leave these men alone, talking about the apostles and the disciples of Jesus. He said, let them go, for if their purpose or activity is of human origin, it will fail. But if it is from God, you will not be able to stop these men. You will only find yourselves fighting against God. So <laughs> I thought that was a very uh, relevant quote there from Acts 5, 38 and 39. Uh, yeah. We can't fight against God, so no matter what humans try to do, God's word will will prevail, and you know the truth will prevail at the end. It, it, absolutely, yeah. The, it gives you a lot of hope, doesn't it? Yes, yes. All right, thank you so much, Raphael. Um, would you like to help us um, in a prayer? Close off in a prayer, please. Okay, let's uh, pray. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray the memorare. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known, but anyone who fled to thy protection, implored thy help, or saw thine intercession, was left and aided. Inspired by this confidence, we fly unto thee, O Virgin of Virgins, our Mother. To thee do we come, before thee we stand, sinful and sorrowful, O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not our petitions, but in thy mercy hear and answer us. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, Queen of Peace. Pray for us. Pray for us. Our Lady of all authentic apparitions. Pray for us. Pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Thank you.